So my heap is going to endeavor to chant. I will not make you do this if it is too difficult. So please cut yourself in and plenty of slack. We can get by with just English if need be. But see how you do, okay? It's for that. I will get to that in just a minute. Zoom people, am I still online? I don't think yeah. I, okay. Mark, what verse are we on? Chapter We're one. We're in chapter one, number 37. Chapter one, verse 37. What's, do you really know the page numbers in the book? The uh, page is uh, 31. The pages may be a bit different. You've got a PDF or do you have the hard copy, Mark? I have the Kindle edition. Yeah, should be the same then. Chapter one, verse 37. The pages are different. I think it's, uh, it looks in the book, it's on page 18. I think that's- As, as long as it's chapter one, that's the most- Chapter one, 37. Yeah. Right. Page 18. Yes. Thank you. All no right. Problem. So give it a shot and uh, nice and loud because I don't hear well anymore. Even okay. though you stumble, don't worry about it. Don't try to chant it, just say it in prose. Sure. Anvaya Vyakti Re Kambhyam Pancha Kosh Vivekata Swatma Namam Tat Udat Great job. That was great. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> great job. Yeah. All right, and the English? Okay. By differentiating the self from the five sheets through the method of distinguishing between the variable and the invariable, one can draw out one's own self from the five sheets and attain the supreme Brahman. Yes. So here, Vidyaranya is introducing us to the primary 
the foundational meditation in Vedanta. It's known as Drikrishya Viveka, discrimination between the seer and the seen. It's known as Atmanan Atman Vivechanam, discrimination between the self and the not self. And the classic formula that he uses is the Pancha Kosha, uh, the five she's. So I like to think of these, did we do this last week? We used the idea of Russian nesting dolls. Yes. Yes. So reviewing what these various sheaths are. What's the grossest sheath? Who remembers? Physical body. Physical body. Annamaya kosha. The food tool. What's the next sheath? Giving you hints. Prana. Pranamaya kosha. The vital energy sheath. The vital air sheath. Next one. Feeling. Manomaya kosha, the mind. Next kosha? Intellect. Vijnanamaya kosha. And let's remember when we discuss the Vijnanamaya kosha, within that sheath is what we call karta, the agent. This is the function in the intellectual sheath that attributes to the self the qualities of the non-self. For example, I got up this morning, I made my bed, I did the dishes, I talked with some friends on the phone, I went to lunch with my friends Dan and Ron at Guru Puri House. Came back, watched a little bit of news, listened to a book, got ready for class. This all happened to me, the individual. Didn't happen to Daniel, didn't happen to Mahib. There is nothing wrong with this. It only becomes problematic. One, I don't understand where does all the activity of that agent come from? Guna and karma, simply the qualities of mind and the force of the past as it interacts with the larger karmic environment, the society. Number two, I need to know it's not me. It's just a function in the intellect. So that's that karta. Where does it lodge? In the subtle intellect, the vijnanamaya kosha. And the subtlest of all the koshas. The mangamaya kosha. Oh, mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. The bliss sheath. We experience the bliss sheath for the ordinary person in two conditions. What are the two conditions? Meaning having a desire met and in deep sleep. Yes, did you all hear that? The satisfaction of a desire, one object of desire and desire become one. That's the Ananda Maya Kosha. For a moment, the mind is freed from its craving. The other place I experience it is deep sleep. We call it the Ananda Maya Kosha because I'm still in ignorance. <clears throat> I do not know that that's a taste of my own nature. So here, Vidaranya says this is our first basic practice. Now, in Viveka Chudamani, Shankara's great text, which follows much of the same path. He starts out the glories of the human birth. It's interesting. He lets us stay identified with the body. What is it that becomes human? 
then we become adhikari, the qualifications of a fit student, practice viveka, varagya, shamadi guna, mumukshutva. Very important. What is it that's doing all these practices? It's the mumukshu. It's the seeker after liberation. It's very important to go through that process. Then he will subtly shift. And now he gives us the seven questions Shankara does. What is my bondage? How has it come about? How does it continue to exist? How do I get out of it completely? What is the not self? Who is the real self? My bondage is ignorance. I superimpose on myself the qualities of the not self. Basically, the punch cushion, the five sheets. Here we start discrimination. I am not any physical object. I'm not a feeling. I'm not a thought. I'm not a mind state. What am I? Chidakasha, the space. Ooh. Over and over and So here's technically what happens. I may be here at class or I watched a YouTube video or read some scripture. And I'm very clear, oh, this is my essential nature. And I set that aside and I go into the world and all of a sudden, I am worried about paying the mortgage this month. Oh, I am upset because I yelled at my significant other. Oh, I am worried about politics. I need mine, I need mine. What happened to my knowledge? Who can tell me? What happened? Old habit. What? Old habits came up. And the root of that is ignorance. It's ignorance. For example, Mahib, do you ever forget you have, you have the body of a human being? It can happen. Hmm? <laughs> it has happened. <laughs> Most of us <laughs> don't. You don't think you're a goat or a cow or a horse oh, yeah. or a pig. Yes. yes. You all, it's, there's no effort to it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I forgot when I took mushrooms once. Oh. I literally forgot, like I was shocked. Oh, there's a hand here. Wow. There's a body. What is going on? Yeah. Anyways, but other times I remember the human body. <laughs> My point being here, the root of the problem is ignorance. How do I do that? We have to take on this mantra, this slogan. If I think I'm a person, I'm deluded. Ego always says, resolve the struggle of ego, meaning move my personness from this place to that place. Here, Vidyaranya says, no, get out. Now, if we've had moments where we know our ground of being, our essential nature, we at least have something real with which to work. But what we want is sthita pratya, steady wisdom. Finish the whole damn business. During the day when ignorance overcomes the mind, and I'll never see it, but all of a sudden I'm in the gym and I have a problem and I need to resist that or I need to go there. Drop it. Let it go. 
अहम ब्रह्मास्मि ओवर एंड ओवर एंड ओवर एंड इट कैन नॉट बी डन आफ्टर द फैक्ट इट डज इस नो गुड to be talking with a friend or talking with a spouse and saying oh i got so identified today oh i'm over it now i dropped it you have to be able to drop it when it's happening when it's happening when it's happening don't settle for less Settle for less. All right. Next verse. It was another paragraph. Maybe it's small. Oops. Is it of... is it a commentary? Is it in smaller print? Yes, a small. That's just commentary. So don't worry about that? it. Yeah. Yeah. Verse thirty-eight. <clears throat> Abhane stula de hasya. स्वर्णे स्वर्णे यक्तान मात्मन नाना सोडनव्य सोडनव्यो व्यति रेकत रेकस्त द्वाने दन्यान वभास नम The physical body present in one's consciousness is absent in the dreaming state. But the witnessing element, pure consciousness, persists in both the waking and dreaming states. Yes. This. Go ahead. This is the invariable presence, anvaya, of the self. So the self is perceived. Hey, is that commentary? No. No. Yeah. Okay. Lastly, though the self is perceived, the physical body is not. Yes. So the latter is a variable factor. Yes. So the point is, what is it that we are endeavoring to realize? What is the eternal factor? What is nityam? Meaning, what is never subject to negation? If it has a beginning and an end. If it's confined to the waking or dream sleep states, or the, uh, the dream or deep sleep states, if it occurs in time and space only, the past, the present, or the future, if it has qualities or characteristics, that's not it. What is the eternal factor? Me. So I'm lying in bed and punch my pillow. I'm in the dream. The waker body is not available for experience. I always have plenty of energy and a slim waistline in that dream. It's very funny. Wake up from the dream that I had. Okay, I'm gonna get out of bed, grab the back of the chair in case my back grabs my well, very different body in the waking state. It's not available in the dream. And neither is available in the dream. But who knows the waking state? I do. Who knows the dream state? I do. Who knows the mushroom trip? I do too. Listen carefully. The self may be difficult to realize, not because it's far away, 
but because of its profound ordinariness. It's always here, it's me. It never shuts off. What is self-realization? I don't become anything. It's this profound shift. Where does it take place in the mind? I'm not a person. I'm done. And I know what peace and happiness are. It's the mind abiding in the self, free of its stupid attachments. I'm reading this wonderful book, uh, The Noble Eightfold Path. And the author, uh, Bhikkhu Bodhi, always relates it back to the Four Noble Truths. First, the truth of suffering. Then how, what is the cause of it? How does it arise through our craving, our aversions, our attachments? And freedom from the craving, aversions, attachments is freedom from the suffering. And what's the fourth noble truth? How do I permanently become free from suffering? Not, how do I learn to put up with suffering? It's not what it's that. Don't make this up. Any thoughts, any questions? Next word. Similarly, in the state of deep sleep, the subtle body is not perceived, but the self invariably witnesses that state. While the self persists in all states, the subtle body is not perceived in deep sleep, and so it is called a variable factor. Yes. So some people posit the eternal nature of the transmigrating soul, the antakarana, the um, uh, sukshma sharira, the subtle body. But it's not permanent. It's completely unavailable for experience in deep sleep. It too is variable. Now, many people wrestle with this idea, Jim, I'm unconscious in deep sleep. Consciousness is not permanent. I'm unconscious in deep sleep. Vedanta says, no, your mind is folded up into pure ignorance. But you are there. So we can illumine the presence of something and the absence of something. For example, you guys here in the living room, look around. Can you see the objects in the living room? Yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Close your eyes. Can you see the objects in the living room? No. Yeah. Are you blind? What are you doing? You are seeing the back of your eyelids. 
you are seeing the occlusion of the objects. You did not go away. Your seeing did not go away. Do you see that there's a phone in my hand? Yes. Do you see that there's no phone in my hand? Yes. So in deep sleep, I am there to know the unconscious mind, the mind folded up in deep sleep. And if you wake up in the middle of the night because you have to pee, if you were not there, you would know you went to the bathroom. Lights on, you're immediately there. It's like if I had blackout curtains here in the room and you couldn't see a thing, but your eyes were wide open and I lit a match, you would see it immediately. If you were blind, you could not see it. So I am the consciousness that illumines the cycle of waking, dreaming, deep sleep on the daily basis. But I am always there. Now, the underlying point that Vidyaranya has been working on, because he's in tension with the Shunyavadans, the scholiasts of the void, the intellectual Buddhists who say consciousness and the phenomenal world are dependently originating and both are transient. <laughs> And then the question that Vedantam asked is, okay, I'll go along with you. Consciousness, awareness is transient. When it disappears, how will I know it disappears? I saw it disappear. Oh, wait a minute. That means something was there to see something disappear. Buddhism and Vedanta do not disagree. Something does disappear. The ego sense. And when the ego sense disappears, so does the world. I am Atma, Brahma, the self in you is that Brahma, which is the ground of being. Amen. Any thoughts on this? Next verse. You're doing great, Mike. <laughs> you feeling more comfortable with it? Yeah. See? See what the false thing. evidence appearing real here. <laughs> <laughs> Face everything and read the damn slogan. <laughs> okay. The V V K V. By discrimination of the subtle body and recognition of its variable, transient character, the sheets of the mind intellect and vital airs are understood to be different from the self. For the sheets are conditions of the three gunas and differ from each other qualitatively and quantitatively. Yes. 
So when the mind is in pure tamas, deep sleep. When the mind is mostly tamas and rajas, dream. When the mind is tamas rajas with samsatva, waking state. All of it is just the modifications of the rules. So if I'm feeling sick, I got COVID, <clears throat> meditation, meditation, forget it. Uh, give me some coding. Tell us. I go on a meditation retreat. My mind gets very sick. Sattva. But I know the mind moving through the room. Now, here's a secret. In Gita, Krishna says something that appears very contradictory. He says, O Arjuna, be you, be Gunaihi, be you beyond and ever remain in the sattvic state. Huh? You just told me to be beyond the words. Now you're telling me to be sattvic. So the mind will always be in one of the states. My identity is beyond. But in the equipment, in this very body, in this very life, I want to be happy. Maintain a sacred mind. So some people think, oh, I've had such a terrible day. Pour me a scotch and water. They think happiness is becoming tamasu. Oh, I was so stressed out. I just went home and I binged watch on Netflix or got on the phone. Do the apps or do you go this way? I don't know. I've never done it. <laughs> Zoning out. Taking the mind from the pain of rajas and tamas. Or if I have some upset in my life, what I do? I get busy. I'm just going to clean everything up in the kitchen. I'm going to go down and with my dad died. True story. When my father died, my stepmother went home and washed every window in the house. How she dealt with her grief, no blame. But she dealt with it through rajas. Now, may I use you as a guinea pig tonight a little bit? Yes. Okay. So before class, I twisted Mahip's arm and asked him if he'd read the shlokas in Sanskrit. Do you remember what you said? First you said yes, and then you said something else. I have some resistance there, I guess. Yeah. And I, maybe like I don't, I'm not as good at this. But the yeah. first thing you yeah. noticed, oh, I have resistance. Yeah, I noticed there's resistance. But you didn't run out the door. Mm -hmm. You didn't immediately say, oh, I won't do this. My experience, you just noticed it and moved forward. Mm -hmm. Wait, am I wrong? Uh -huh. You're completely right. Thank yeah. you for noticing. Yeah. <laughs> That's sattva. Oh, look at that. <clears throat> Being present, not needing to move away from 
the discomfort of that. So here, Vidyaranya is saying all the various permutations of the subtle body, thoughts, feelings, memories. In old timey days, you go to the astrologer. Ooh, oh, this says in my past life, I, I was a. Uh, um, a janitor in the pyramid and I got locked inside and that's why I haven't solved the problems I have. Today, oh, family of origin. My mother didn't nurse me long enough. My father was absent. My older brother beat up on me. I didn't get a birthday party when I turned seven. The same idea. We identify with the history, the memories, the stories of the subtle body, the repository of all our experiences. Now, there's a paradox here. For some of us, We may need to make the unconscious conscious. Work through this stuff to psychotherapy. Maybe do some body work. Maybe do some breath work. Many, many avenues. If you're led to do a past life regression, I would never say not to do anything. Follow your intuition. But in the end, if we want real freedom, we have to go beyond the sun. Any thoughts on this? All right, next verse. Sushupta Yapani Panan Tu Samadha Batmano Gatpanya Vyati Re Kas. <coughs> Avidya manifested as the causal body or bliss sheet is negated in the state of deep meditation in which neither subject nor object is experienced but the, but the self persist in that state. So it is the invariable factor. But the causal body is a variable factor for though the self persists, it does not. So what Didyaranya is referring to is <clears throat> the deepest states of meditation, samadhi. Now, there are many levels of samadhi. Samadhi that he's referring to here, we would call near vikalpa samadhi. Near, nis, without. Vikalpa, vikalpa is a movement. Sama equal. Be my absolute quiescence of mind that there's no movement. Oh, 
Why? Because the personal sense of self, the ignorance that it's caused, phenomenal world, are dependent on the kalpa, the movement of the mind, the marsha, some movement or deliberation. Swamiji used to say, when the last thought is thoughted, before the next thought is thoughted. Now, depth of meditation is far more important than length. If you are sitting in meditation and you have moments of absolute quiescence, you're doing well. Now, an interesting topic under discussion is what we call fleeting samadhi. In fact, people experience samadhi all the time. It's a natural phenomenon of the mind. You may call it spacing out or zoning out. But if the attention is extroverted, zone out, maybe because of fatigue, Maybe because you've heard some shock or oh, everybody in your family died in a plane crash. Stock market failed. Oh. But it does nothing to free us because we're extroverted into the world, the mind stops. When the mind returns, you're extroverted into the world. So, this is why the scriptures say we need yanam vijnanam cha. We need understanding, yanam, and wisdom, vijnanam. So in an auspicious moment, perhaps between the inhale and the exhale, or presence of the teacher and tune up to the teacher helps us stop the mind from us. And when the teacher reminds us to turn the mind's eye inward, notice the knowledge. You may just get a little flash when there's mind behind it. And you see, oh, there's no person there. Those are technically samadhis. Now, as we're practicing tuning up the mind, this intense introversion, this is what Shankar will call Savikopa Samadhi, pulling all of our attention and energy out of the program, deeply introverted, meditation in action. Then we keep working on letting go of our attachment to phenomenal things and every sense of identification. And at an auspicious moment, the mind stops. Personal sense of self disappears. And if it's deep, 
it never returns. Now there is a debate with Mang Vedanta. Is samadhi necessary? Some Vedantins say no. My view, it does us no good to try chasing it. And it just becomes another object of desires, what we were talking about several days ago. But what we do need to continue to do, as long as that personal sense of self continues to arise, oh, that's going to be And for some of us, it's a big away. Everything is different. For others, it may just be a tick, a shift. What the Yaranya is saying here in Samadhi, the individuality disappears. World disappears. The ignorance of the causal body disappears. But I remain in all its glory. Then, when the intellect returns from the samadhi, it reflects on this and goes, oh. There's nobody there. Wow. Amazing. Or as Shankara says in the refrain of Nirvana Shataka, Chidananda Rupaha, Shivoha, Shivoha. My form is bliss conscious. Shiva, I am auspicious. Now, always when we talk about the disappearance of the world, it can mean you have a deep near Vikalpa and the phenomenal world disappears, no longer there for perception. But another way to look at it, when I'm in the state of ignorance, I, Jim, see a world out there and they make me happy and those sons of so-and-so make me really upset. And that seems real. Sahaja Samadhi, natural or continuous Samadhi. The mind stays introverted, it does it extrovert into the world. And the light show continues to be perceived. But I don't see the world. I see the play of Brahma. So the point that Vidyaranya is getting here is you are beyond even the Ananda Maya Kusha, pure ignorance, the Vasana Bandha, the causal body, deep sleep. Any thoughts on this? Next verse. Yatha, 
भक्तिया ऋषि के वर्मात्मा युक्तिया समुद्य धृत शरीर धृत या वीर परम ब्रह्म जायते as the slender internal pit of munja grass can be detached from its coarse external covering so the self can be distinguished through reasoning from the three bodies or the five sheets then the self is recognized as the supreme consciousness yes so munja grass i think it's kind of like lemon grass but i think our modern day thing that i always related to it's like green onions like scallions so you go to whole foods and you buy your scallions and there's coarse sheath on the outside so if you want to put them in a salad you cut off the end but then you have to take off the outer sheath extract the tender shoot with it but with the three bodies gross subtle causal or the five sheets these are just different maps they're not territory when i do the cosmic strictures and they gave them all there's no form in the middle when people get confused with this especially if you study scripture without a guru without a good commentary for example at the end of kato upanishad the upanishad says meditate on the self as a flame the size of your thumb in your heart i'm looking for myself in the middle it's in there with my heart oh i see a little flame that's it that's myself these are what we call upasanas various forms of meditation worship for those who cannot yet enter into the highest truth at the core of the five sheets is like space vast and empty chidakasha the space of pure awareness not from there yet that no thing shines it's chit it has baba be e Good. Next one. Parapara ma no reva yuktya sambhava sambhavita kata tatvamasya divakya sya bhagat. in this way the identity of brahma and jiva is demonstrated through reasoning this identity is taught in the sacred texts in sentences such as thou that thou art their method of explaining explaining the truth is through the elimination of incongruous attributes so we need to find what we call lakshanam the implied so if you see in the upanishads you are that you are god oh. 
This is nuts. I can't even keep my desk clean. I've tried very hard to be a good person. And I know how can I be God? If I meditate more, if I do more pranayama, if I do more asceticism, will I become godlike? We have all these ideas that somehow, Dr. Masi, you are God. That's the potentiality of a human. You become a godlike person. Microcosm, macrocosm. The individual, the infinite. You have a physical body. God has a physical body. We call it the jug of the creation. You have a subtle body, thoughts and feelings, etc., perceptions. The infinite has a subtle body. We call it the total mind. You have a causal body, your vasanas. The infinite has a causal body. We call it Ishwara, the Lord. He who rules this entire cosmos. But at the core of your being is witnessing consciousness. Atman self. And the ground of being for the entire cosmos is Brahman. What is Brahman? The jnana brahma. Brahma is consciousness. That witnessing self in you. And that ground of being. In which the whole universe rises and falls. They are the same thing. You are not a part of Brahman, you don't become Brahman. Find out who you are, and you find out who God is. That's the deep meaning of the Mahavakya want to see that part. Any thoughts on this? So always we're doing a negation of both. It's not just my individuality realizing I'm the witness. But it's also understanding what is this world? What is its material cause? How has it come about? <clears throat> it too is nothing but Brahman. Next verse. Jagato Yadupadan Padana Maya Madaya Tamasi Nimitam Shudrat Satswam. Tamuchyate Brahm Tadira. Brahman becomes the material and efficient cause of the world when associated with those aspects of Maya in which there is a predominance of Tamas and Sattva respectively. This Brahman is referred to as that in the, in the text that thou art. So here, Vidyaranya is dealing with the whole notion of causality. And the classic images that we use is a 
potter making a pot. I, the potter, on a potter's wheel, put a lump of clay and make a pot. So I have three kinds of causation. I have efficient cause, instrumental cause, and material cause. What's the material cause of the pot? What's the pot made out of? Clay. What's the instrumental cause? What's the instrument that I use to make a pot? The potter's wheel. Who made the pot? The potter. Efficient cause, instrumental cause, material cause. So when it comes to this jagat, this creation, what is the material out of which it's all made? consciousness alone. Easiest way to understand this, I say this over and over again, you are the God of your dream. If you look at how you create the dream, your one unified mind refracts into the dream body or the dream ego, perceiving the dream world, Dream world of people, places, things, and conditions, and an interior world of thoughts and feelings. It's one mind that becomes that triple factor, knower, knowing, and knowing. This is no different. It is Brahman itself, which becomes the gross and the subtle, and all the individual perceiving entities. The material cause of the universe is Brahma. It's all consciousness. And it never leaves its dharma. It's the dharma of Brahman. Satchinananda. Efficient cause. Where does Brahman do it? Does he have to go to Brahmaloka to make the world? No. Within himself. And who does it? By means of Sankalpa, is what the scriptures say. We could say the world is not created. It is a dream. Is it manifested? Well, it's certainly seen. But is it really there? So as the yogi endeavors to withdraw his reactivity from the world, Thins the mind. The world becomes more and more, the best word I can come up with is transparent. Very diaphanous. Just kind of like suspended in space. The dim hole. Appears as a world of name and form. It's nothing but consciousness. Any thoughts on this? Next verse. Yadam Malina Satwam Ta Karma Karma Tivishwam. I can't hear you, sweetheart. I was reading the same thing. 
to the next. Ritiya, Ritiya, Mapita, Tam, Mukta, Twam, Paraspara, Virodhinam, Me, Akhandam, Satchitanandam, Mahavakya, Lakshate. Yes. When the three mutually contradictory aspects of Maya are rejected, there remains the one indivisible Brahman, whose nature is existence, consciousness, and bliss. This is pointed out by the great saying that thou art. Yes. So when the gross, subtle, and causal nature of the phenomenal universe are negated, not this, this. What's left? Sarvam kalvidam brahma, all this is barely. But what about all the people, places, things, and conditions? Brahma satyam jagan. Mithya. Brahman alone is real. The stuff I'm seeing, Jagat. Mithya. Mithya means literally a lie. It means illusion. Seen but not real. Rainbow in the sky. Seen but not real. Train tracks coming together in the distance, seen but not real. The bowl of the sky painted blue, seen but not real. Castle in the clouds, seen but not real. Now, you can have children and you can tell them a story. Once upon a time, there was a land in the sky which didn't exist. And in that land in the sky that didn't exist, there was a castle that was never built. And it was surrounded by a moat which had no water. And there were magical swans swimming in the moat that didn't exist, that had no water. Inside the castle, there was a beautiful princess. She had the face of a frog. Green long hair. She would stand in the window and let down her hair and go, ribbon. Read it, read it. Could you imagine my story? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's very vivid. I think this is a good place to stop. What verse are we on for next week? 47. Chapter 1, verse 47. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Shishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Rupyona Maha Hari Om 